immediately after how fast this thing goes. So a lot of times people have quite a bit of club hit speed, but it doesn't get into the ball. So the first thing you want is, I've got a couple of launch monitors here, you know, and, and uh, Rapsodo makes a great MLM that I use all the time because you want to see what your ball speed is. So you've got club head speed, ball speed. So you want to see how efficient you are. And again, with the driver, it's like one and a half times. So if you've got 100 miles an hour of club head speed, you should have 150 miles an hour of ball speed. If you've got 90 miles an hour, then you should have 135 miles an hour of ball speed. If you've got 80, then you want to have 120. So the first thing is to make sure that you're efficient with the speed you have. Because if you're not efficient and you create more club head speed, it won't turn into more ball speed. So you've got to be really careful about what you're doing relative to getting this thing to go faster. So we're talking about understanding where speed comes from. Unfortunately, a lot of people and where the industry is now, it's focused on your core and how strong you are. And that's going to be where all your speed is coming from. So if you think that's where all your speed comes from, it's going to create some, but there's some other parameters. And we start talking about where are those parameters, or what are those skills? So one of the major skills as we talked, is, is what this does. So this, this lever, lever system, system is really important. Now, most people, the two basic lever systems where you're going to get the most of your speed, they don't use them correctly. So, so it wouldn't matter how, how strong you got, got how much your body, body moved. moved. It's, it's just not going to work. work. It's not going to turn into ball speed. Off the club club base. And, and we talked a little bit about, about if, you, if you hit a ball with 100 miles an hour club hit speed, then what should happen is this should go 150 miles an hour. That's efficiency. Most people are extremely inefficient. I and mean, we see it all the time with our launch monitors. So you have X amount of club head speed, but the problem is you don't have the ball speed. So you're not hitting the ball solid. In fact, I used to tell people all the time when I do clinics, I says, you know, you want to do this every day. You want to get up when you go to the golf course. You want to say, Mr. Ball, I'd like to introduce you to somebody you've never met. The center of the club face because center face hits are really important relative to creating ball speed so if you can't hit the ball square in the center of the face speed isn't going to do you any good so now let's start talking again a little bit more about when you go out and play how can you gain more speed well the first thing is i'd ask you just to go out go on the range and just throw the golf ball a couple of times now what i want you to focus on is i want you to feel the lack of tension in your wrist. So when I throw a ball, there, there, there's not a lot of tension in my wrist. Because if I tighten my wrist up and then I tried to throw the ball and my wrist was really tight, see, I couldn't create any really any, any speed. That's kind of like the snapping of the towel. That's part of the speed that you generate. So this is a big deal right here. All right, the other one. Everybody talks about light grip. Well. It's nice to have light grip pressure. My grip's pretty light on the golf club. That driver I hit, I mean, there's not a lot of tension in my hands. But the reality is where you really need to be relaxed is in your shoulder sockets. So if I had to stand and you had to move your arms independent of your shoulders, so you had to swing them around, you swing them back and forth and up and down, you do all this, okay? Now, how much tension when you're doing that is in your shoulder sockets? Virtually none. Okay, well, that's what your golf swing's got to feel like because what has to happen to create speed, even if you're using your body correctly, what has to happen is your arms, your arms have to accelerate and go faster than your body's going. And it's interesting when I watch people, again, let's go back to the ball analogy because I think you can all feel this really easily. And I, I know it's funny, but it's, it's, it's really what people do. So if I'm going to throw a ball, when I throw a ball, if I turn sideways, when I throw a ball, how much is my arm moving relative to my shoulder? Well, it's moving a lot. Okay, so here's how I throw a ball. Now, as I put my body into play, but you see this, this arm and my shoulder socket are relaxed. So now I've got my arm going, and I've got my wrist doing this. My shoulder's not doing much. 
Now, if all of a sudden my shoulder moves in a bigger arc, it creates even more speed. Well, let's say, for instance, all of a sudden, stay connected, keep your left arm straight, where you lock up those shoulder sockets so they don't move. So now, to make my arm go, now what has to happen? Now my shoulder has to go to make my arm go. And this is how most of you play golf. You play golf like this. So when I do that, see, I, it's hard for me to make my arms go very fast. So it's this deal right here. This is what most people have to learn. So you actually have to separate body parts, become disconnected to figure out how to use these forces that you're dealing with to become connected and create speed. So here's your first speed producer. Here's your second speed producer. Okay? So when you start out every day, you want to try to get those under control. So you want to feel this in your wrists and you want to feel your shoulder socket relaxed. Now there's a lot of drills. It's interesting when you watch tour players, you know, they're constantly standing there and they're just swinging the club. All right, now if you watch me do this, a couple things are happening. One, when I swing the club back, what happens to my wrist? It levers. All right, and then as I swing down, I just let the weight of the club drop. And what does it do over here? It relevers back up. Now, how much is my shoulder moving? It's hardly moving at all. Okay, so my arm is rotating in my shoulder socket, but here's the other thing. If I tried to do this little motion right here and I locked my shoulder up, well, see, all of a sudden the club can only move this far. So now I have to, I have to move my shoulders a lot to get my arm to move at all. So this becomes the next step. So you know, you understand this, and now you kind of got your arm going. Now, how do you lever the club? to create speed. Now what's interesting is this lever system is probably for sure one of your biggest speed producers and 90% of people do not use this lever system correctly. So when I'm practicing, every day when I practice I start out with a little drill where I just swing the club here, let it lever, swing it over there and let it lever. Now if you watch what's happening here, how much is my center, how much is my center move? Well, it isn't moving very much. Why? Well, because it doesn't have to move much to stay up with what this club's doing. See, when I swing a golf club, if you watch my center here, as I'm hitting a little chip shot, you watch my glove hand here. So my center's staying up with the club. All right, now as I start picking the pace of the club up, see, it's getting a lot faster. But how much faster is my center moving? Not a lot. Okay, so there's a relationship between the rotation of your body and the rotation of the club. And what happens to most people, as soon as you hear this core body turn thing, you go back and the first thing that happens is you go <clears throat> and you make your body go. And guess what you forgot? You left the club behind you. So now all of a sudden, you, you take off like this and then this is trying to catch up and do all kinds of things to hit the ball. So I had a discussion again the other day with Mr. Nicholas. Jack always hit the ball a long ways. And just, just for most of you out there, and what he thought I think would help most people relative to hitting the ball. I know it's helped me my whole career. And he talks about when he gets to the top of his swing or when he gets back here, when he gets back, he makes sure that he makes a turn, obviously. But when he comes down, he says he feels like he takes the club and he puts the club on the back of the ball and he lets his body follow the club through. Now that's a feeling that he has. But I can promise you for most of you, if you would do that relative to speed, you'd end up creating more speed, not less. The more you try to use your bodies, you're assuming, you're assuming that this is gonna work. So if this doesn't work, now we got a problem. So this little lever system right here is what's going to give you most of your speed. Now, if I turn around on this swing analyzer here. Okay, so one hand. So I take one hand, 70 miles an hour club head speed. That's seven. Now, there's a lot of people that I, that I teach. 
71 miles an hour at club head speed. 81 miles an hour at club head speed. Now there's a lot of you watching this today that 80, 85, 90 miles an hour is all you can do and you're using all your body and you're doing everything you do. Well, what am I doing? I'm barely holding the club with two fingers here. I'm standing here, 79 miles an hour club head speed. I mean, so you gotta be careful about where you go and what you hear relative to speed. Right now we're all into ground forces and all of this, which I'm not saying it's wrong, but, but it's, it's a science. And a lot of times the science of things, what I found out my whole career is not necessarily the best way to do it. So you gotta, you gotta look, this is an art form and it's also an athletic motion. So when you start breaking it down into positions, most all of you are gonna get locked up. So again, I'm just standing here, whether I do it with my right hand, okay, that's 81. That's 80. Okay, so I can get it up to, let's see, if I go, 86. I'm almost up to 90 miles an hour of club head speed and I'm standing here just swinging with one arm and, and there's not, there's hardly any tension. Now, I use this all the time as a demonstration and I know demonstrations, you know, you can make them say whatever you want to say, but this is pretty, this is pretty graphic and, and it's kind of fun because it starts to separate and get you to understand where speed really comes from. Now, again, I'm not saying that your body isn't a speed producer. There's no question it does. It's just how important is it? Where does it fall in the priority list? And how much of it do you need to hit it far enough to be able to play golf and have a lot of fun with it? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attach this to my shoulders. So now this is the club head. So this is going to be pretty impressive, so watch this. So now I'm going to make this thing go as fast as I can make it go with my shoulders. Which, it looks funny, but a lot of you, when you go out and play with your buddies this afternoon, you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of this kind of stuff with your shoulders. That's not going very fast. Now this one's really impressive. Now I'm going to hook it to my hips. So I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to hook it there. So now i got to make it go fast with my hips. This one's really going to knock you down. In fact, this might blow the camera over. All right, that one's really fast. Now, how about this one? Unless I'm mistaken, that went seriously faster. That's going a lot faster than the other two. How much is my chest moving? So, if you had to take one of those three speed producers, body rotation, hips, or relative to speed, which one would you pick? Okay, they're all important, but if this one doesn't work, if this doesn't work, it doesn't matter how much you move this, it's not gonna turn into club head speed. So that's where I argue with a lot of the industry especially getting focused for most people on how fast your body moves. See, these tour players, regardless of how fast their bodies move, no matter how much force they put into it, when they get right here, basically there's a braking system. So their left leg stabilizes, their shoulders and their chest slow down, and what happens? So those, their arms are coming down, these things put the brakes on. What happens? The club accelerates. Now, where do most of you hang out? You're tight in your shoulders, you're tight in your wrists, and you're trying to pull the club through with your bodies. So what happens is you're very, very inefficient. You're using a tremendous amount of effort, but you're not getting much out of it. So every time I do that little drill, or every time I have somebody take a stick, again, how much does my body move? Can you hear how fast that stick's going? So a lot of you just take a stick like this and just swing it. And make it go fast. 
You know, that's a very good way for you to understand where speed comes from. And then tighten your shoulders up and try to make it go. The, when I tighten my shoulder sockets up and I try to make this go, I mean, I can, I can make some speed. Now, this will this will show me the speed on the stick. So if I tighten, tighten my shoulders, okay? Seventy miles an hour. I do the same with my driver. I stand here, tighten my shoulder sockets. Sixty-seven. Now all of a sudden, I loosen this up. Ninety-eight. So again, when we come back to speed, you got to be really careful about where you go to actually create it. So you got to get your arms going fast, which is the club. So this has to be able to move quickly. So the, the key to this is your wrists have to be relaxed and your shoulder sockets have to be relaxed. Again, I mean, we've all heard light grip pressure and I talked about this. I can play golf with a really tight grip as long as my shoulder sockets are relaxed. Now, ideally, I want shoulder sockets relaxed so my arms can go, but I also want a light grip pressure so my wrists will work. I mean, so that's the ultimate. Now, if, if, you, if you get those two working for you, you're going to hit the ball a lot further. Now, here's where I struggle again with the industry. They start talking about ground forces and how you want to use your core. And I'm going, okay, me personally, if I use my core, I try to get my body more involved, it makes my arms go faster. Why? Because I already know what to do with my arms and hands. So let's talk about that for just a minute, how a golf swing actually works. So this is the, we can go with science here. So I start my swing. So my arms start back. By the time I get about here, I've got all the force that's going to go into my right foot is in my right foot right now. Okay, as my arms swing to the top, force goes from my right foot to my left foot. Now, once that force goes into my left foot, then this leg starts pushing back and away. And what that does is that initially starts my arms. So my shoulders actually start my arms. But then what happens is once they get started, then my shoulders don't keep holding my arms. Then my shoulders, like my left leg and everything else, slow down so that I can accelerate my arms. So if you all go out and practice, and you just like you're throwing a ball, if I'm, if I'm throwing a ball, I go back, forward, and then this stabilizes, and it pushes back away, and what do my arms do? They accelerate. But how much effort? See, there can't be too much effort going on, because if there was, if I was tightening up, what would my voice do? It would go up, and all of a sudden, my voice would go up. So the one good thing is to stand there, make swings, and start making your arms go faster, and see if you can talk and not have your voice come up. Because if it goes up, then you tighten up. And if you tighten up, you slow down. So the science of a golf swing will say, I'm using these forces to generate speed. Well, I would, I would agree with that. But look at what my arms are doing relative to my chest when I use the ground. See, there's no tension here. So if I all of a sudden use the ground more, what do my arms do? They speed up. But there's no tension again, especially in my shoulders and in my hands and wrists. So that becomes a really important thing for all of you to try to practice, is to understand where that's coming from. Now, we're gonna talk about something relative to generating ball speed. I've got a putter here. Why would this have anything to do with generating speed? It's called efficiency, and it's called line of compression. Now, I'm starting to be really technical here. And you know, the other thing I find interesting about the industry is I think a lot of people now are educated 
way beyond their intelligence level to be able to actually make it be applicable or for you to be able to use it. So you got all this information and knowledge, but it's way above your intelligence level relative to how to use it. So we got to break this down into real simple things. And that's why I want this. This game should be easier, not harder. So one, we got a little, we got a little of this going. Two, we got to make sure we keep our shoulder socket relaxed so your arm can move independent of your shoulder. I can't tell you how big a deal this is. I, I'd say 95% of people that show up, they're so locked in their shoulders. I mean, I don't know how you don't throw your backs out every time you play because there's so much tension like this. It's in your shoulders, it's in your neck, and you look like robots. You know, it's got to be this. All right, so now I got a putter. What am I going to do with the putter? Well, when we talk about club head speed into ball speed, you have to learn to compress the ball. All right, so where does compression come from? Well, the club face has to hit the ball square, but also in every sport, if I hit a baseball, what does my right arm do? If I turn like this and hit a baseball, my right arm lines up with that shaft. So that this supports this, so that that force gets into the ball. If you hit a forehand in tennis, where is your arm? It lines up with the racket. See, if I hit a forehand, I wouldn't have my arm up like this. If I hit a baseball, I wouldn't have my arm up here, because then even if the ball hit the center of the bat, because my arm's out of position, there's no stability in the bat, so it wouldn't compress the ball. All right. So I got a putter out here, and we're talking about creating speed for your driver. So I stand here, bent up to a putter, my right arm winds up with the shaft, I go back, my right arm gets right on the back of the shaft, it pushes the shaft through the ball, and I hit the ball in the center of the face. Interesting concept. Guess what I do with my driver? What's my focus with my driver? My right arm gets on the back of the shaft. What does it do? It stabilizes the shaft and it pushes the shaft through the ball. I mean, that was 50 miles an hour club head speed. Okay, so right there is a big, big speed producer in your golf swing. So when we, we start talking about you want to hit it farther, Okay, do you maximize the speed that you have? That's the first place you want to go. If you are maximizing the speed that you already have, all right, now how do we create more speed? Most of you are going to create more speed by using this lever system more and getting this relaxed, getting your shoulder relaxed. Because I can promise you, I stand on the range every single day. I've been doing this for 50 years. Every single time an amateur shows up, almost without exception, across the board, unless you're getting down into the low single digit handicaps or plus handicaps, they show up and when they swing, they are, you are so tight in your shoulder sockets that you can't make a swing. You, there's no way you're going to create any speed. And if you do, the way you're going to have to do it, I mean, I'm surprised you don't all have, have chiropractic adjustments after every time you play golf. I mean, it's a, it's a workout routine. So, when you go play and you want to create more speed, you want to get a feel for hitting the ball solid. And, and again, you know, I've got this launch monitor on here, this speed thing. And if I just get the club, now I've got this one on that's giving me the ball speed. This one's giving me the club head speed. So if I just don't swing what looks like very hard, but I compress the ball, okay, that was about 90 miles an hour of club head speed, and that ball went about 220 yards in the air. I mean, uh, so, and the and the ball the ball speed was up around 1 130. So my point again. Most of you are after speed the wrong way. You're trying to use your core, which creates tension that tightens your shoulders. 
See, this couldn't be further from four. Okay? Now, I've played a lot of sports. I'm going to reinforce this as we keep going. You play sports, you know, baseball, basketball, tennis, ping pong. You play with your hands and the racket. This is the biggest part. Now, when you serve a tennis ball, when you serve a tennis ball, how does your, how does the racket work? And what's it doing? Okay, so if you watch this handle, if I serve a tennis ball, what does this handle do? Well, it actually, it stops going forward. What does it do? It slows down, it actually reverses directions. I mean, that's how you serve a tennis ball. What's this handle doing? Now, if I tried to serve a tennis ball and I did this, and I took this, and I drug this, and I twisted my body as fast as I could, okay, how far, how hard could I hit the tennis ball? Not very hard. So this little motion right here, that little thing right there, is this. It's, that's my golf swing. See, levers are levers, and speed is speed. It doesn't matter what sport you're doing. So here's where I'm generating the majority of my speed from. Okay, now let's go back into the body again. If my body moves correctly, it can help accelerate my arms and help to accelerate this. But here becomes the next problem. So we're going to talk for a minute about what you're hearing on TV and what you see. They're talking about all these forces. And they're saying that the most important force you can generate or what is strongest is a vertical force, so, which I would agree. The human body, this force to do this, is the strongest force it can generate because all the muscles line up at 90 degrees. All your structural muscles, your paraspinal muscles, your hip flexors, your quads, everything is exploding in one direction. So you create a lot of speed. The problem is when they tell you to hit a golf ball, and they say, what we want you to do is create vertical force. Well, see, the problem is, now there's a lot of biomechanics people out there who don't just say vertical force because it isn't just vertical. But if you go out and you try to do this, and you go here and you get here, and you try to jump up in the air, here's what I will promise you. you first of all, you probably hurt your back. Second of all, you jump up and the club swings out, it'll pull you off, you'll land right on your, you know what, it'll pull your legs right out from under you. So the key with your body, yeah, it's going to create force, but what it can't do is get in your way of your arms. So when people start trying to jump up in the air, where do their hips go? Closer to the ball. All right, so now there's no place for my arms to go. So what happens is they try to jump up. There's no place, so your arms go out. And now you run the club into the ball, but where's your right arm? So you can't get your right arm on the club to create force. So when you start using your bodies, one of the most important things, at least until impact, your body cannot get in the way of your arms. So when I swing, or most of the tour players, when I go back, when I come down, where's my body going? You ever notice tour players' heads? What do their heads do? They get up here, when they start down, what does their head do? It actually moves down. Why does my head move down? It's not because I'm tucking my chin. My head moves down because my body moves, my hips move back. See, my hips move back. And then as they come into the ball and they go through the ball, then they'll try to stand up on the finish. So I get a lot of comments all the time about different players and what they see. Let's take Justin Thomas for a minute. Okay, what does he do when he hits it? Everybody says, well, he goes up on his toes. He jumps up in the air. Well, Lexi Thompson is another example. Jumps up on her toes. Laura Davis jumps up on her toes. Bubba Watson jumps up on their toes. Well, yes and no. Because if you watch all those players really close, they go back. When they come down, yeah, they go up on their toes. But where do their hips go? Their hips go away from the ball. Their hips don't go closer to the ball. So in physics or in this world, you have offsetting forces. If you want to create maximum amount of speed, it's like snapping a towel. 
So if all of a sudden, if I'm going to hit you with a towel and I'm coming at you and my arm just keeps going and I try to hit you with the towel like this, which is basically people swinging where they do this. So if I'm hitting you with a towel and I'm just swinging my arm, I can't hit you very hard. Now, if all of a sudden I go, Toop. when I do this to the towel, you go, ooh, don't hit me with that. Well, what, what caused that snap? Well, the towel's going forward. What does my hand all of a sudden do? It goes the other way. So now the towel's going this way, my hand's coming back. It causes a, a snap. Well, in a golf swing, when you're coming down into the ball, as the club's coming into the ball, this leg pushes your left hip further away. So the club's going forward, this hip's pushed back. It's not turned. See, there's another word that's killed all of us, turn. I never try to turn. All I'm doing is moving my hip sockets. So when I move my left hip socket back, so the club's coming down, I've lost all my force going laterally, okay, so it stops. And as the club's coming down, I push my hip back. Guess what that does to the club and my arms? It accelerates them, just like the snap on the towel. If you get up there and all you try to do is just twist and you keep going, there's no break. There's no resistance to snap the towel again. Here's what I find interesting also. I was a pretty good swimmer and I was a pretty good water polo player. Now, I've got a pool out here. I could go get in the pool. We're talking ground forces now. I can get in the pool, take a water polo ball, kick up in the water and throw it you don't want to get hit by the ball. So there's no ground forces in the water. So I can't touch the ground. How, why can I make the ball go fast? Well, I can make the ball go fast because it's called a nutation. What does that mean? It means that my lower body is creating a neutralizing force against my upper so that I can create and make this go faster. So when I get in a pool, and I would encourage all of you to do this, you can do it one or two ways. You can get in a pool or you can sit on a, a bench, uh, one of those circular chairs that they have at the bars, and take your feet off. So all you're doing is sitting on the bench. Okay, what happens in the pool, when I take the ball back to throw it, because I'm in the water, when I take the ball back, my hips go actually the opposite direction. They go forward. And when I throw the ball forward, my hips go this way because it's trying to create a resistance. So this is more about resistance for this to go than it is generating a tremendous amount of speed. Now, can it help you do speed? Yes, but you gotta be really careful where you go with that. I can stand here on this club head speed deal. All right, here we go. So I can go back and I can take this leg and go that way. Well, see, that's over 100. That's 103 miles an hour of club head speed. That's up to 108. What did my hips do? They didn't unwind. Okay, so again, folks, please, you want to hit it for, we all want to hit it for, it's a development of skills. Skill one. Okay, skill two. So now we've created this lever system. Now your body's got to move to let your arms swing in a bigger arc, and it's got to stay out of your way. If you want to start using it, then as you come down into the ball, as the club goes through the ball, you don't have to do it very hard. This, this left leg stabilizes, and it pushes away from the forward momentum of the club. So what does it do? It accelerates the club. Okay, this doesn't have to be rocket science. You know, it's not that difficult to create enough speed for you to play at a high level. Now, one more thing relative to speed. If you watch the ladies, which is probably the best for all of us, these girls, I mean, they hit it 230, 240, 250, 260 in the air. Now, what is this? It's gravity. The higher I lift the club, when it hits the ground, it hits it harder. Why? Acceleration. So, when you see these gals, and you look at Justin Thomas, 
Where do their arms go? They let their arms get up here. Why? Because as their arms drop, so if I just go up here, and I just let my arms just drop, and I generate, and I use this lever system, so all I'm gonna do is go up, let my arms drop, and create this lever system, and my body's just gonna move with my arm speed. So it's not gonna create more. 90 miles an hour club head speed. That's faster than most of you swing right now. Virtually no effort. See, what am I using there? I'm using gravity, momentum, centripetal force, and this thing that would cause acceleration, which I just push away just a little bit. It's not dramatic. You don't have to go <clears throat> and jump out of the way of it. But when you watch these players that hit it a long ways, where does their, where does their lead leg go? What happens? Look at Bryson D. Chambeau. Where does his, what does his left leg and left foot do? Well, because as he comes into the ball, he's pushing away so hard, pushing away. That's not up. See, that's very misleading. It's not up. And you're pushing away from the arc of the club. Club swinging on an arc, like this. I'm pushing away parallel to that arc. I'm not jumping up. If I just went up and the club went out, now I'm fighting forces. I'm not, they're not parallel forces, so they're not creating speed. So if you just go through those couple of things, get this better, get this looser, learn how to create this lever and hit the ball solid where your arm lines up and then start using your body a little bit more to give you a little more swing and a little more force, you're gonna hit it plenty far. You get those down and now we can start talking about maybe create a little more speed. Now, questions. We've started to have questions come Okay, one question I've got says when I have, uh, when I use fast hands, I hit it all over the place. Okay, am I much better with body speed instead of hand speed? Okay, here's what I will say. If you use your hands correctly, you can't use them too much. Now, remember we talked about this? Okay, there's two ways to use your hands and arms in the golf swing, only two. There's two focuses. So one is either this or this. And, and what do I mean by that? So if I stand here in the camera, there's two concepts of golf. One is this concept, where your forearms rotate. Okay, the other one is this, where there's minimal amount of forearm rotation relative to the arc that my arms are swinging on. Now this is what I started with as a kid. So if I use my hands this way and my grip's correct, that face, no matter how much I use my hands, that club face is going to stay fairly square to my arc. So the ball goes pretty straight. Now, if I start using my hands this way, now the face is twisting so much that yes, then using more hands is going to make you more inefficient. So again, there's only a couple of ways you can use your hands. And I got trapped from this, what I had when I started, which the game was really easy, and I hit it pretty solid, and pretty straight all the time. Then all of a sudden they said, oh no, we gotta do this. We gotta open the face, close the face, bow your left wrist, turn your arms over. That is a way to play. But for most of you, the timing to do that is astronomical. The amount of practice it takes, believe me, I spent thousands of hours and hit thousands of balls. I got pretty good at it but you don't have that much time. Now, what am I back doing now? So now, if I overuse my hands, say I throw it really early and I use them too much, it just adds a lot to the face, but the ball goes straight. What if I happen to drag my hands a little bit? Well, the ball goes lower, but it goes straight because I'm not having to time all of this. Okay, so that's the first one. If you use your hands correctly, you're not gonna use them too much. All right. Bryson DeChambeau, he's the big deal now. What's happening with the tour? So all of a sudden, Bryson's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, he's hitting these 360 yard drives. All right, Bryson also does a lot of stuff with the neurological coach. It's training his neurological system and he's trying to increase and maximize what they call fast twitch muscle fiber. 
and he's maximizing every joint in his body. And he's working out who knows how much every day. And he's hitting balls to be able to monitor and do this. And then he has full-time trainers that are working with him to keep his body somewhat balanced so he doesn't end up killing himself while he's in this process. Okay, what's gonna happen to most of you if you go after that? First of all, when you look at Bryson's swing, even though he has quite of a different grip, and he sets up with his arms fairly high, when Bryson gets to the top of the swing and starts down, so he creates this lever system. And that lever system is what he's accelerating through the ball. So it goes from here, and he uses his body to help accelerate that lever system. And his arms straighten out. And so he's creating a lot of speed. He's a strong kid. I watched him. It's impressive. But if I went after it the way he's doing, and I tried to do that, like I say, I've got two herniated discs in my back and one in my neck. If I did that, first of all, I don't think I would create much more speed. Second of all, I'd get hurt doing it. I've been on this club head speed thing multiple times. And here's what I would challenge all of you to do. You get one of these. And you stand there and you make really easy swings. You know, don't make a hard swing and hit it. See what your club head speed is. And then put just a little more swing to it, a little more gravity, a little longer swing and feel the same thing. And then watch your club head speed, watch your ball speed. Then start trying to add more force with your body and watch what happens to your numbers. See, where numbers are good is they start now to let you understand what's effective and what isn't effective. I can tell you, I get on these, and I try everything that's out there. Again, the reason for this site, for Alaska Golf, I want to help you through a lot of the information that's out there. I've been through most of it. I mean, I've had a pretty damn good career. I mean, I've been all over the place. I've played a lot. I've tried most of the things that are out there. And so... If I see something that's valuable, or all of a sudden it starts making an impact on my speed, my game, believe me, I'm going to give it to you. Now, most of the things that are out there, when I do them, it, it doesn't make my speed go up, and it doesn't make my efficiency rate go up. Now, sometimes my speed will come up a little bit, but all of a sudden I lose control of the ball. Well, speed is only good if you can control where the ball goes using it. So, so again, when you start looking at what's happening with golf and all of this strength thing, that's not necessarily the best place to go. These little launch monitors can help you make a swing and you feel like you, you, you swung a lot faster. And then you look at the numbers. I can't tell you how many times I get students and I've got the launch monitors on and they hit a couple of balls and they're just standing there and they feel like they're not going to swing at all and they just lever the club lever the club, and they start hitting balls. And they're hitting them, and the comment is, now I've already put them on with their hard swing when they started, and now they feel like they're not even swinging at it, and they hit it, and I go, you know what? Your club head speed there is about the same as it was on that club that you're on that swing you made at first where you went really hard at. No way. I go, yeah, look at the numbers. How is that possible? Because you have a misconception of where speed comes from. It's not necessarily coming from how much effort. So you want the effort to come down and the speed to go up. In every sport I've played, everyone, I was a pretty good skier. I was a good baseball player, decent basketball. Okay, every sport I've played, the skill of control is first. If you go more speed than you have control of, it doesn't make you better. Now here's interesting in skiing. How do you ski? Well, it's edge control, right? So, and the skiing is pretty simple. I mean, if you turn, to turn these skis now, all you have to do is lean. So I lean inside, outside edge, and the skis turn. I go the other way. Pretty simple concept. Okay, well, let's go the double black diamond run with the big motors. Most people wouldn't do that, especially if you're not that good. Where are you going to go? Blue, green. You're going to go on a run, bunny hill, whatever, because you're only going to go as fast as you have control of your edges, because if you lose control of your edges, you fall, you're going to get hurt. Okay, well, in golf, your edges are the club face. So if you go faster than your ability to control the face, it's not going to make you a better player. It drives me crazy when I hear this talk about 
If you hit your driver 10 yards further, you're going to shoot lower scores based on the tour. It's based on the tour. Most people, 10 yards further means 10 yards further out of play. So you got to be careful about 10 yards further because most of you don't have control of the face. And if you back the speed off and you get control of the face, you'll probably find yourself hitting it farther than you hit it when you're putting a lot of effort into it. So be careful about effort. When I was a kid, uh, Sandy Koufax was a hero of mine. And he wrote a book and he made a bunch of comments about pitching. And he said, when he learned how to throw fast, softly, was when his pitching took a whole nother level. Learn how to throw fast, softly. Now I used that my whole career in baseball when I was, because I'd get out there and like all of us, I'd go to try to throw one and I'd feel my body tighten up. And what would happen is I felt like I was putting more effort into it. The catcher would come out and he'd say, Mike, man, your speed's way down. Something's off. Okay, well then all of a sudden I'd, I'd feel like I slowed down and I'd get softer, and all of a sudden, you'd hear the pop in the mitt, so your speed came up. So it's the same thing in golf. You want to go after things that take out tension and effort, especially at first. If you can hit the ball a significant distance without a lot of effort, then you start adding a little more speed. But that assumes you have control of the club. So that's the most important thing. Get control of the club, get control of impact, start to generate more and more swing. As long as these levers work and as long as, you're, as long as this is working, you're going to create plenty of speed to play golf at a really high level. Now, you want to go out and see how far you can hit it and swing as hard as you can, go ahead, have fun with it. I mean, it's all about having fun. But be careful with it relative to getting hurt. And also, speed doesn't necessarily make you a better player. Is it important? Can be. How much speed do you need to be good? And I'll end with this. I used to do corporate America all the time. We need, did the Nicholas Flick golf schools. I traveled all around the country and all around the world doing it. And I would play with guys all the time. And we'd go out and they're swinging as hard as they can swing and hitting it sideways. And I'd take my seven iron and my wedge and my putter from 6,000, 6,200 yards. And I'd show up at the first tee and these guys would go, well, what, what are you doing? Well, I'm just going to hit my 7-iron. So I just hit my 7-iron 150 yards in the air. You guys do whatever you want to do. And then I hit my 7-iron again, and then I've got probably a wedge left to the green. And so what would happen is after three or four holes, I'd go, guys, what are your scores at this point? You know, some had lost half a dozen balls by that point. They're 10 over par. And I said, what's my score? I would be somewhere between even to two or three over par at the most. Now, never hitting a ball over 150 yards in the air on a 6,000-yard golf course, I'm going to shoot between 72 or 3 to 80 every time I play. Every time. Now, my short game's pretty good. Now, 95% of people who play this game can't break 100 on a consistent basis, and they're pushing speed. Well, you know, are we trying to be long drive experts, or are you trying to play the game? See, this game is who controls the ball. Whoever's miss hits are the best, wins at every level. And they're promoting speed. Well, you lose control of the ball, you're not going to be able to play golf very well. So here's what I hope happens. I hope that you'll all take this and look at it and spend a little bit more time focused on the things that actually make speed work. Now, I'm going to try to look at one more question here. Two methods of instruction with respect to the movement of the arms and hands, up and down versus across. Okay. These questions, like I say, are really good. It's the reason why we're doing these, these live shows. And I want you to go to MalaskaGolf.com because my commitment in this game, because I've been through it, is to help each one of you have another idea and another way to go at it. It just might let you play the game at a higher level and have more fun with it. So when we talk about those two concepts, you know, what's interesting is when I look at golf, and believe me, I've studied the golf swing probably as much as anybody. What's the thing, now in golf really there is nothing new out there. If somebody says it's new, 
then it's probably not true. Now there's new information and there's new, there's new ways to explain things, but since golf started to now, it really hasn't changed much. Why hasn't it changed much? Because this body, this hasn't changed. So this body is designed to do certain things. Joints are designed to do certain things. Now, the design hasn't changed, so all of a sudden this wrist is not a shoulder socket, so it doesn't, it doesn't swivel. So the body is the same as it was 200 years ago. So when you start making motions, there's only certain things it can do. And your body tends to want to move more in straight line forces. That's what it understands, straight line forces, so because muscles expand and contract. All right, so when you talk about crossing over this, I was, I was trapped into that because they told me, take your, take your grip, neutralize your grip, get the toe up, hold this angle, and then rotate your forearms as hard as you could. And that, that that would accelerate the rotation of the face, which was a speed producer. And oh, by the way, here's a picture of somebody who's phenomenal that does that. Okay, so I bought it. It's not that it's not doable. It's just extremely complex. And I spent hundreds of hours practicing this. And I got pretty good at it. And I played in the number, I played in the US Open, I, a number of major tour events. I, I won section events. I won the state open. I mean, I did a lot of things. And I got pretty good at it. But I never really feel like I reached my potential because I was always fighting or I was always protecting against the bad shot. Because if I got just a little quick or a little off, the ball could go sideways. So when you look at twist, as opposed to this one, and you look at what the face is doing, for most of you, through the ball, to be going like this is going to be a lot easier for you to learn than to learn all of this stuff. Because what TrackMan and those launch monitors have helped us, if that face twists just a couple of degrees, so I'm going to take this driver and I'm going to hold it in the camera. If I hit a ball with that face and it goes dead straight, okay? Now I make another swing and my face is four degrees off from that. Same path. It's four degrees. Let's say it's four degrees open. The ball can slice 40, 30 or 40 yards offline. Okay, let me show you what four degrees is. Four degrees is about that much. Now you might not, you might not even be able to see the face even move. Okay, four degrees closed is about that much. Ten degrees, which track man, I mean, if you come in and your face is ten degrees off, you're going to miss the golf course. Okay, here's ten degrees open. There's ten degrees. Okay, so when you got a club moving at high speeds and the face is rotating a lot, and that little amount of impact can send the ball off the golf course, you know, I can promise you from my perspective, I'd want to know how I can keep the speed up, but eliminate the face rotation, which is what I did as a kid. It's what I'm trying to teach now. Is the other one doable? Sure it is. I am not in this to say that I'm the only way to swim a golf club. That is absolutely not the case. There's a lot of ideas out there. There's a lot of guys playing with a lot of different swings. What I'm saying is based on what I've learned, based on what's helped me and what helps thousands of people that I work with, this is the easiest, most efficient way to do it. And it's, it's worked for me and it's worked for, and it worked for a lot of tour players. I don't just teach amateurs, beginners, and old people. I mean, I work with a lot of tour players. It's the same thing because the body is the same. Joints work the same way. The more efficient you are with the joints, the more efficient you are with these forces, the better you're going to play, the more consistent, the further you hit it, less chance for injury. You do those things, you're going to love the game. So in closing, Go to MalaskaGolf.com. We appreciate it. Man, I appreciate it. Sorry we had a little problem with technology. That's just what this world is. But I'm going to keep doing these every month so you can look forward to them. I look forward to the questions. Uh, you help me learn, whether it's from YouTube or it's from my site. I have gotten to be so much better, I think, in the last five years as a teacher because I've opened myself up to listen to what your questions are. And there have been quite a few on the site that have sent me questions or comments about things that, have, that I hadn't even thought about. And it's really helped me as a teacher because if I didn't understand it or they made a comment that sounded like, you know, I need to research that, then I'd go look at it and I'd figure it out. And if it was better than what I was doing, okay, I'm going to do it more. I'm not stuck into just being what I am forever. If 
all of a sudden something out there makes more sense to me, me personally, not only from my swing, but what I know about the body physically, I'm going to give it a try. If it makes me better, then I'm going to give it to you. If it's not helping me, I can promise most of you. Now, I'm a decent athlete with decent hand-eye coordination. I've spent a lot of time around this game. Now, if something makes sense to me and it helps me, then I'm going to show you what it is. If it's hard for me to do, I'm just guessing that most of you are going to struggle a lot more than I am. I'm not putting that out there. Even if in theory it says this and if you do it for six months and you work really hard, you're going to be better. That hardly ever helped me. What happened after six months, I wasn't that much better. I was better at doing what they told me to do. But the swing didn't feel any better, and I really wasn't any better relative to control of the ball the scores I was shooting. So you should immediately start to get better fairly quickly. Your understanding, your control of the ball. This shouldn't be that hard. It's a stationary ball that you're trying to hit to center field. In my opinion, to hit it, now there's much more to golf than just hitting the ball, but to hit it, it's the easiest sport to hit the ball. It's a stationary ball. It's easier than baseball or tennis or ping pong because those are all over the place. And you have to judge where the ball, you don't even know where the ball's going, and you have to put the racket on it. This, you know where the ball is, it's not gonna move. So in theory, it should be easier. And for me, it was when I started, and it is now. Okay, it's easier to hit it. Now, I'm not saying that makes the game easier, tremendously, because there's a lot to golf. There's uneven lies, there's reading the wind, there's, there's all different types of things that you have to come into play. but relative to hitting the ball you should be able to hit it fairly decently have fun with it and hit it plenty far so from Alaska golf and all of the people on Alaska golf thank you very much for showing up and again i apologize for the little glitches we'll get them figured out this is a learning curve for us also but we want to give you this information and hopefully we help you all be a lot better players and hit it further and when we see you next time we want to see you in the fairway and we hope that the fairway you're in is the one you're actually aiming at Be sure to subscribe to my channel for regular updates and tips. Thanks for watching.